Hi, my name's Gay Schempf, and you're here in my studio at Whiting Mills in Winstead. I work in a wide variety of media. I work in pastel, have been an oil painter for most of my career, and in the last, I'd say about 10 years, I've transitioned into encaustic, which is pigmented beeswax that's melted and fused onto wood. I've always been involved in teaching. I was a public school teacher. I taught in New Canaan High School for 20 something years. I think I've pretty much always worked in series. An idea will come to me for a piece that I want to start. After completing that piece, oh no, it would be better if I did this. And then it grows from there and widens. Series usually is about two to three years of work. And then I need a new content. I need a new spark and something will happen and start me off on a new series. I recently came from a series was about migration. Started with my concern about losing the big herds in Africa and started doing images showing migration. Then I became aware of human migration. These are people in camps. The little tail feathers here are people. And this bird figure is kind of leading them out of the camp to freedom. I did many paintings of people walking in, family group, and this is called The Passage. Working with that subject of human migration became difficult, emotionally. A difficult subject like that and try to make beauty out of it. Finally, when it came to our, our migration on the border of the U.S., I was like, that's it. I can't come into the studio and be depressed every day. I really need new content. I don't know what I'm going to do. The next day, this murder of crows came into the yard, maybe 20 or 30 crows, and they settled in a grove in the back of my yard. I started um, taking busted earrings and shiny things and throwing them out there, trying to keep the crows there so I could observe them. They ended up staying there for about three months for a whole season. Eventually allowed me to just be right out amongst them, sketching them, photographing them, observing them. And that created a whole nother body of work. So I started working with the imagery of crows. And the more I observed them, their intelligence, their quirky gestures and so forth, I just became fascinated. They gifted me with images of the crazy things they do. They do not like my dog. They hiss and flap at her. She's never barked at them or anything. They just have imprinted on them. They don't like white dogs. What the birds are doing really comes from what I observe. So they've gifted me with these sketches or photographs I can work with. These are birds on the lake. Here's an interesting thing that happened. I work with a torch and when the torch gets low on fuel, sometimes it hisses, it spits. It comes out like in a blast, in a spitty blast. And it'll, it, anything that you were delicately trying to trace, melts off. So that happened one day after, uh, on a piece I had spent a day and a half on. And the next, I just said, that's it, I'm going home. Came back the next day, I said, I'm gonna do a piece using that. So here I overfused it, allowed the, the torch to do that on purpose to get the idea of a reflection on ice. Here I've overfused the bottom so that it looks like it's underwater or under ice or a reflection, then crisped up the image on the top by using a heat gun instead of a torch. But this is all encaustic. That is just a fantasy. They would, they don't, do not get along. It's me fantasizing that they would play together, but they don't. This old crow was always, was just on me all the time, watching, watching, watching all the time. So, I had to paint him. Oh, a little chirpy. This is a baby bird, and it really, it's about me ex exploring different ways to use encaustic in the background more than the bird. I, I want to do something different. I'm going to go back to sculpture. Um, and I found this material that allowed me to, uh, it's almost like a felt-like material, which allows me to form it uh, heat it with the heat gun so that it solidifies, put plaster over it, and then I can put wax or paint over that. I make art about what's going on in my life, and what's going on in my life right now is the pandemic. Having spent so much time in Italy, I really love the Venetian masks. 
the Carnivale mask. And there's a character called the Plague Doctor. I'm gonna sculpt the Plague Doctor and I'm gonna put contemporary images on it to use the symbol of plague of uh, coronavirus in a potent way. After I made about six or seven of them, I'm like, you're making crows again. You can't, they, they're not done with me, I guess. Here's one that actually shows, here's a little painting of the crow doctor who uh, was really, I guess today we'd call him more like an undertaker. Here's the Lady Liberty with her mask on, Dr. Fauci and other symbols. This one speaks for itself. This one's more hopeful. When I was working on this series, the pandemic hit. I didn't have my art supplies, my uh, sources of imagery, my tor torches, anything like that. I just had a pad and pencil and I said, I'm gonna keep a visual journal and I'm gonna use the crow as a persona to tell the story. I thought it was gonna be a couple of weeks. This is quarantine 2020 and grew out of that last series, which was the crow series. I started drawing every day, whatever was happening. Here's, here's the going outside of grocery stores and finding these gloves on the ground or hoarding toilet paper. It was a cold, rainy spring and we were trapped inside. Every time I coughed, Glenn said, my husband said, take your temperature. All the things that we couldn't do, dinner parties, bars, salsa clubs, our new accessories, and, and it follows right through. So I never intended to make a book. I was just amusing myself, but after about 80 sketches, 80 or 90 sketches, uh, people who had, I was posting on Facebook every day, these images, people were saying, don't stop. We need these, <laughs> you're, you're illustrating our shared experiences. You're part of life. I, my work reflects what's ever going on in my life at the time. So, um, if I see a bear or I'm confronted with a bear, that happens kind of often where I live, you can be pretty sure there's gonna be one showing up in a drawing or a painting within the next week. Or, as, as I said with the crows, living right next to them like that, of course they permeated my work because they were part of my life.